Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Workshop again, where I hope you guys have got your pens, notepads, pencils, rulers and laptops all ready and waiting because you're going to get some messages and some lessons on how to stop busting any fishing lines by setting the reel drag to the correct tension. Plus a little bit about the hook setting power of your rod and your strike. It's interesting, you might not know it and I'm hoping you'll be able to learn something from it. Here we go. Okay, what I've done is I've put a flush mounted rod holder into a vise, lash the bottom off so that uh, it doesn't twist, and I've got somewhere to rest the rod and reel. This is 50 pound stand up, stick a tuna stick, cow star, and it's a Shimano uh, TLD25 reel with 50 pound line on it. So it's a sort of big fish outfit. It's not as big as an 80 or 130 for marlin, but you can take some pretty big fish on this. Now, as all you guys know, You've got the fishing wheel and it has a drag system. It either has a star drag, which you do up like a little nut, or it has a lever drag, which goes up and down, you know, on your thumb. That pushes together two plates, basically fibre onto metal, a bit like car brakes really, and that's so that the fish can pull line out like this under pressure. Now, let's just take a little closer look at this because what these reels come with, especially with the better ones with the lever drag, is what's called a preset system. And you want to be able to preset the strike drag at less than the breaking strain of the line. Here's how we do it. Now, just here at the center of the lever is what's called the preset button. Now the strike drag comes up against a stop up here, like that. And the only way to get that over there to here to what they call full drag is to depress this button and slide it over like that. Now that pretty well almost locks the reel up. Now you can work out straight away, that's too loose, it's too loose. So you bring the lever back, you give it say a quarter turn on the preset, then go back to the strike position, a bit more drag. Another quarter turn, strike. That's better, that's, now that's tight, that's tight now as you can see, that's pretty tight pulling it off. Now let's just measure that and see what we've got and see if we're anywhere near 10 pounds. To do that, we just go down the other end of the rod, up the rod top where I've got a swivel and we're gonna attach a spring balance. Okay, I'm going to wind it up and I've got a spring balance there which I'm going to measure off. I'll put the hook through the end of the uh, snap saw, you know, so that I can give it a good pull. I'm going to measure it off and just see what we're, we're actually physically pulling on that strike drag setting at the moment. Okay, now you see we've got the setting there. That's, that's just pulling line off under pressure. Probably not almost normal fishing pressure if you were, uh, say, going bottom fishing for Congo or Blue Sharks or whatever, but it's not the strike drag set, and you'd be surprised what the, what this actually reads. Okay, take the balance, and we'll pull it down on what would be a sort of fighting curve, and we're going to two pounds, three pounds, we're going to listen for, listen for the ratchet to click, then we know the drag's slipping. That's shocking, that's four and a quarter pounds. That's four and a quarter pounds. So now we can adjust this by Backing the drag off, drag off going up, say a quarter or a half turn, closing it to strike position, and taking another reading. Now, that's a bit more like it. That is, that's reading now. Put it right down. That's eight pounds there. I'll bring you this side, and then you can see just how little bend there is in this 50 pound rod. Okay, you can see we're nearly there, so I'm going to wind it back up, ease the drag back, just give it maybe just under a quarter of a turn, lock it back up to the strike position, take a wrap on it, and it's pretty tight. Now, a fish is not going to rip this out, okay? It's just never going to snap that line up to a point, and I'll explain that in a second. So let me just Check that spring balance reading again, and we will get. I want to knock my camera over. We are on. Well, I can see we're on eight already. Okay, I'm going to hold that rod back as it twists. There we go. No, that's that's just under a fraction under ten pounds. It's a fraction under ten pounds. Oh, the rod's got a pretty good bend in it. 
So any fish, any fish that hits this now, on that strike setting with new 50 pound line, is set at nine pounds, which is a lot of drag, really. You use a lot more than that marlin fishing, but you can have a big sharp, and you can see you've got the give of the bend of the rod, but you've also got loads there, loads of drags going, which is what it's all about. However, don't think you can leave that on for the whole of the fight, right? This is the biggest problem. You hook a big fish, it starts emptying the reel, it gets right back down, getting lower and lower and lower. Oh my God, oh my God, it's, it's, it's emptying the reel, I'm gonna get my spool dumped. So what is the natural thing to do? The natural thing when you see it screaming out, if you're a beginner, a novice, or even, you know, guy that's done it quite a bit, the natural thing is to wanna to go, I want more break, I want more break. Well, to do that, you've got to depress the stop over to full strike. Now, that really is the danger zone. That's almost locked it up, full strike, and it probably will break. But do you know what you do when a fish is running a long way out? You're on the strike drag, and once you get to about, I'd say, a quarter of the spool down, not only do you not ever, ever go up over the strike drag to try and stop the fish, which you probably won't, you actually start easing it back slowly because the reduced diameter of this spool it's like a fulcrum, it's a bigger lever, the smaller, the light, less line on the reel, it takes more pressure to pull that off. Now, I'm going to try and wind some of this spool off onto another, another uh, spare spool I've got, and then, because we know we've got this set at nine pounds, we'll, we'll just measure it again with, say, half a spool of line. I'll tell you what, it's shocking the pressure that increases, and then I hope you'll believe what I'm telling you. Let's give it a go. Okay, I get to use all the totally awesome tools in here, and I've made up this spool for removing line from fishing reels. And I get to use the Mexican drill. Yes, Maquita! Well, it sounds Mexican, doesn't it? Well, it does to me. Lovely girl she is. Put your fishing line on there, and with, with great care, I'm going to remove half the spool of line here try to duplicate what would be a fish taking a load of your line out. That's a quarter of a spool. We'll see how we go. I think I don't want to burn my ratchet out. So we're now, I'm going to whip a piece of uh, other line on here so I don't damage this line, put it through the rod guides, and we're going to do that test again and see what happens to it. Well, for you guys, I've sacrificed the line and I've actually cut it and I've put a proper loop in it. Got the spring balance again, haven't touched any of the settings, I'm going to put it through the loop, set it up, and it's going to be scary what I now have to pull to make that drag move. Okay, the balance is on, I've done this before. I'd say it's about third to half a spool gone, which any big fish could take out. So remember, we were on nine pounds. So nothing disastrous happens. I've got to get down there because I know what the figures are going to come out like. Fourteen pounds. Fifteen. Eighteen pounds. Not drags not even moving. Twenty-three. Hey! 20, 26, just going, look, 26 pounds. So, if I can barely move this with 26 pounds of pressure, that shows you that nine pounds of pressure on a full spool has absolutely no bearing on the pressure once you lose line. As you lose line, get to about a quarter of spool, something like that, go in, you go, go in, do not put the brake up. You don't need to, you've seen that there. Come back on the brake and look where I've got to come back to just to get the spool to move. Almost free spool to there. I'll go to free spool, that's free spool. The, the barest drag there now, we just check this out of interest, is 10, 12 pounds and I'm nearly on free spool, 12 pounds. So that gives you an idea and do you know what? This applies, frighteningly, to freshwater anglers as well, and fixed spools, I'll show you. But before I go to those fixed ball reels to show you, I've got to fill this reel up again. 
can I do all these tests for you? I they appreciate you. I'll be back in a jiff. Okay, to show you that the same principle applies to fresh water, I have got standard 12 foot cart rod, two and a quarter pound Tesco, brand new line. I just topped the spool off, you know, so I've got some good stuff there. Five kilos, so just under 11 pounds. Look at 20% drag set here, which is pretty well two and a quarter. So we're saying two and a quarter pounds. And there's the battle curve of the rod. And I'm going to go right down here and read it till the drag moves. So we're on just on the two now. There's the drag. So that's what you'd be normally fishing with if you if you cast out. You're fishing for carp, which is a really popular sport fish over here in the UK. So let's just empty some of that spool and see what you pull when you've got, say, a third of the line out. Just to show you, it's the same principle applies as big game fishing. Right, now because I've got a carbon, or some form of carbon in this rod, if I pull that down and it snaps, it's going to go right through that fluorescent tube. And we all know what's going to happen to me then. I will be fried. So I'm bringing it off through the first or second ring here. And it's the same principle because it still takes the same amount of pressure to pull it off the reel. I'm just losing a little bit of friction through there, but I think I'm retaining safety by not electrocuting myself. So here we go. Don't forget, just over two pounds. We've already passed that. Three, four, eight, that's seven, that's eight. That's between, when the reel goes, we're not, that's nearly nine. That's, that's, that's nine there. That, that is pulling on average between eight and nine pounds on a sticky drag and shows you it's gone up four times what we set it at because there's only half the line on the diameter of the spool. So there you have it. Fresh water and sea, two different ways, but the same principle applies. Do not put the drag up when you have a big fish in this running, bring it back a bit. And I've got another little tip. You'll be shocked at how hard it is to set the hook with one of these carp rods as well. Right, now what I've done is I've come outside and I've measured with this measure 65 yards. So I've gone down the bottom of the garden, 65 yards across the lawn, and I'm going to pick up the cart rod, close the bail arm, strike, which is a standard strike, no hook obviously. I'm going to get my good lady wife just to hold this one lead, a little light lead, in between her fingers, which will be the same as a, as, as a fish, you know, picking up the bait, just in her fingers. I'd like to put a hook in it really, they wouldn't, you know, see if she would squeal a bit. No hooks, just a lead and I'm going to strike down there. I'm going to see how far this goes when I strike out of her fingers. Well, I should be out of breath before I even get there. There we go, there's the rod. I'm all set up, I've cast out my baits there. All I'm going to do is strike and set the hook in that fish. Right, here we go. There you go, your bite alarm's gone off. You've got the bite, the drag's all set there. And strike. Oh, I don't see anything happening. <laughs> I told you. Let's get back down the other end and see how far the lead's moved. Now this is just all the pressure it takes to pull it out of the fingers. Watch. Straight out. Just come straight out like that. Let's get back in the workshop and I'll tell you something else. Now that was a perfectly average carp rig, a carp rod and reel. 65 yards measured, my wife just barely holding that lead between her fingers, no hook involved, and it didn't even leave her fingers, the lead was striking at 65 yards. So, here's a totally awesome tip. When you wind down at long range to strike, just do this, two or three turns as you're bringing the rod up, and then thump that hook home. Or, if you're not using nylon line, use braid line, but also with braid, it takes a stretch out, but when you get the fish close, just remember, really good chance of busting them off. 
no stretching braid could be no fish close in so you've got the option there of spooling up both reels sea or coarse adjusting your drag you learned how to adjust the drag i hope you've all got it for your homework lesson and hand it in next week you should have learned some totally awesome tips and keep watching our channel especially these how-to's good luck with the fishing